Did you say Beaster Bunny there? <laughs> That's what I thought he said. Hey, <laughs> Beaster Bunny. But he does get a bit of the beastie boy about him, and he's like, hey, you want some candy? It's like you want to see my eggs? Wrong. You want to see my chocolate eggs? Fighting out of the G4 Studios, Scotland! Paul Bairdew Craig! Chris, the bad guy, on guard! Ross Cooper! Presenting from the street for in the shade. It's time for Leather Podcast. <laughs> Did you see what um, Gillis and Shane Gillis and Matt call him the, the diddler? The diddler. Oh. How funny is that? He's That's quality. Cool. Free diddler. Palestine. He just <laughs> says it all what, fucking what's day. What's the diddler been up to? <laughs> what, what has the diddler been up to? I don't know, man. He's still just cutting is about. He, He's not been lifted or that, eh? Did he get so, up his drug dealer or something like that when he I heard that as he boarded his private jet he flies to wherever he's going, wherever he was trying to get away mm. and then gave up his drug dealer as part of like the deal with the FBI, like ah, you can have this guy. Oh that is bastard. Shan, like, can he do that? Oh yes. Guy well, gave him Hunter's a good time. <laughs> If the wolf's close to the door, sometimes you've got to uh, fucking you've got to give a, a wee sacrifice. Man's took one for the team. Uh, oh, you left your make up a bit. I think Snoop Dogg did the same thing, eh? What it was beefing? No, no, he, it was Snoop Dogg was meant to have shot the policeman. Did can you hear me? Can but you his, hear me? his mate took it on the chin for him. Can you hear me? Years ago, this is fucking Who? forever Snoop ago. Dog? Snoop Dogg, I was meant to have shot an off duty policeman or something. You would, you would take the hit for him and then take the money, yeah. Spend a couple of. Couple of years in jail. I know. They're millionaires, they're not giving a fuck. Get that fucking gym board on. Go. <laughs> Shug Knight's been saying stuff in prison about him as well. He said, ah, I told you this about Diddy fucking years ago. <laughs> so, did you see the. Uh, there's a cracking picture of uh, it's Biggie, and he's obviously got his squint eye in one eye, looking at Diddy, and the other one's looking at the fucking control board. And he's like, even Diddy knew. <laughs> uh, even Biggie knew. Keep Biggie. an eye on him. He's like, oh, That's it's funny. How scaly eyed fuck. The news is wild now, eh? Loads of fucking mad shit all over it. P Diddy, this fucking bridge, just, it's weird, weird times. The Baltimore Bridge. Mm -hmm. And then Russia saying it was Britain and America who caused the fucking theatre attack and stuff like that. Just weird fucking, they'll chuck out anything, eh? They didn't give a fuck. They were saying the king was dead two weeks ago. So, <laughs> they were, they were putting out in the news. But, yeah, busy weekend for us all, I think. Everyone was busy. You were yes. at Metatech and TalkSport. I was. Um, me and Greg, we'd done a wee tour. Uh, so I'll tell you the story. I got my manager hit me up. She's like, eh, "Talk sport, want to do an interview with you? Just a wee quick one, just about your fight in Rio." And I was like, "Hi, that's fine." So she she sends me the address. We go to this place. It was the address said did say Arnold Clark. That was my fault. But I didn't. I didn't think it was going to be an Arnold Clark. So it was a place called Phoenix House, and we. We rock into Phoenix House. We got all the footage as well, so it's going to be coming out, to, out on Patreon. We get uh, we get in there, chat the door. Hey, I'm looking for Talksport Radio. The last he's like, nah, I'm in the wrong place, so I come back out. I'm trying to get a hold of him. I'm, I'm waiting to use guys pop him out, be like, hey, it's a fucking joke. Um, <laughs> turns out it was actually in an Arnold Clark. The they, were doing like, they, were, they, were, they were doing like a... They were doing like a... One of these fun days mm -hmm. uh, where they were doing live in there. Live in Arnold Clark and fucking Paisley. Me and the big man rock up. We have no idea who it is. There's Ali McCoy sitting with Pete Town. Pete Townsend, Andy. the guitarist for fucking uh, the Andy. Andy, 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 Andy Townsend and John Hartson. John was Hartson. At that time, I. So I look at him like, oh fuck, we've. I've no idea what the fuck's happening here. So then Colin Henry appears as well. So there's. He's on after us, and then we're going on to do a wee bit. Mm -hmm. So just before it, I have a quick chat with the guys, and they're like, right, how do you say your opponent's name? Um, what's the camp been like? Just ask me some like, mm -hmm. like questions, and then the, both guys were in, weren't they? They were, they were really interested in actually finding out about the MMA. I watched, I thought it was fucking good. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought they were, they were spot on. Aye. Mm. So they were asking the questions, obviously <coughs> pushing the fight and then pushing on new channel as well. I've seen they've got like a talk MMA, sport talk MMA, sport. which is 
it shows you where the sport's going. Mm -hmm. So we were totally, I was underprepared for this. And then obviously I like Ali McCoist. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like Ali McCoist? Doesn't matter if you're Rangers or Celtic or whatever mm -hmm. fan you are. Ali McCoist a good pundit. Yeah. Uh, and he's got some good chat and some good stories. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was kind of starstruck. And then we then have to go through there to... I thought they were going to ask you about the Scotland game, and I was like, "Mine Scotland played last night." And they get me, and you're like, oh, "Aye, aye, that's right." <laughs> I was like, "I, I, I don't watch a lot of football now. Like, I'll maybe rock, a, like, watch like a, an important game. Um, mm -hmm. That's why I like the World Cup or the European Cup because you can dip in, watch aye. it for like a couple of weeks, and then be like, "Right, that's me done." Mm -hmm. Rather than being like, right, "I need to watch nine months of football." So I do enjoy football, but it's just trying to find the time. And for us being fighters, it's hard to find time at the weekend. Because if we have got time at the weekend, we're trying to recover or trying to spend it with our family, <laughs> and especially when you're in camp. But it was, we, I was definitely underprepared for getting in there. Um, and then we'd, we rocked up to the gym and done some sparring, and then the bold Cooper <laughs> strolls in like the fucking. <laughs> with my daughter, because <laughs> she was right. so sick. <laughs> she was cool, I sat in the wee room at the side and never, I was expecting her to be out non stop. But uh, it was a wee good, a good spar, it like. Was, it was a good. I um, enjoyed it. And then obviously. Cut my eyebrow. James plays what? old fucking rock music and it gets me, gets my plums going. You buy the tunes were class in there. I, like, I was well impressed with see, the tunes. See when I first started in higher level, I thought James was like gaslighting me. Like, because it, it's all the kind of music I like. And I was like, this fucking prick, man. Fucking try, try to gaslight me. But then I, it turns out you've got very, very similar music tastes. Um, you did catch a spinning back kick. To the, the eye, to the, to the above the eyebrow. To be fair, I checked half it, didn't I? Right. I got the, I, I didn't think that's what was coming. I got the arm up just in time, but the sort of toes hit the forearm, and, and then the heel right came up. through, and just it wasn't too bad. Split it a little bit. Was that what cut you the aye. back kick? Aye. <laughs> but it was at chest height. It was my own fault because the way what I thought was you, coming, you dipped didn't off, you dipped I? I dipped off, off and then I went, "Oh, you fucker! I need to go back the other way," and it. And it got me, eh? but it was like one of the last rounds as well. Right. Of course it fucking was. Did you look over and see, so we've had some Swedish guys in the gym? I saw them, I. So it was like a middleweight, welterweight, and like another guy. A tall guy with tattooed neck aye. and stuff. I just <clears> <throat> to look over and see Sean just fucking nailing this guy's <laughs> calf, sweet fucking calf kick. <laughs> bumf, bumf, bumf. And the guys, like, you can see the guys in fucking pain, but... Mm. Like Sean's just maybe I've, maybe I've touched him a wee bit or something. Aye, that, that's it. Donald, aye, that's what's probably happened. Aye, and then he's just came in to give him his, his dinner. But and obviously he's remember, only a few weeks out, so he's firing all cylinders. But I maybe you would never get caught with that kick if you didn't take like two months at the gym and just rock up to spawn. Okay, well, cameras are rolling. Aye, no. okay, I'll, I'll come in the morning. I'll come in the morning as well. <laughs> But, uh, it's, a, it's a good session that one isn't it, it was and then I'm annoyed at myself with fucking Big Camille because I done what I always done so we did the we did our rounds like it was like kickboxing rounds and then it was like uh, just minute on minute off grappling at the end wasn't it Aye. something like that which I said to Paul I'm like look I'll still jump in for them if you didn't make me fucking bleeding on you Big Camille during the kickboxing rounds was fuck, we were putting a three so it's like two, 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 two. You're just mm. running a train. Aye. I know how it works, bro. I know. <laughs> but Big Camille is fucking cabbaged. So I says, it's all right, Camille, can I'll just work with you? So he's obviously fucked. So I know as soon as we got to the grappling, can't try to rip my fucking arm off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Why have you waited till now? <laughs> like, I was I was sound to you. <laughs> what have you done that I, for? I gave you the nod and you did not give me the nod. <laughs> Mark Ewan was like, nah, did I give him fuck all? Didn't he work for him? Fuck all, Ross. If he's knackered, put on the kind. I was like, a bit strong, but now I wish I had. Right. <laughs> so, but I'm just kidding. I love Big Camille. So we hit that. It's a jungle. Uh, <laughs> and then the Sunday was the opening of Cammy's gym in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Impressive. It facility. looks brilliant for the like, photos, obviously. I've not been there, but it looks good. Top class match. I think they're the, what did they say they were, the F Fuji ones? I can't remember. The Fuji or Zebra, it will be. Mm -hmm. right. They're the two big names, right? right. right. Cracking mats, all like branded up as well for the wall. Wall's a proper wall. Know this stuff that you've tried to make yourself. Mm -hmm. Proper wall, proper mat wall. Um, big lads crashing it as well. It's, it's a nice, <laughs> so the actual floor's built up a little bit and it's made to have a little bit of give in it mm -hmm. so it's no like boom when you hit it um like i don't remember if so i create it, it? Like aye, pallet, aye. So, pallet, so, so so actually it that actually moves and it gives you a wee bit it, it's better for mm -hmm. grappling and it's better for if you're getting taken down closer to a, the the octagon than just being on hard floor like mm -hmm. you think yeah. about it the vast majority of gyms that we've went to they put it directly onto the floor which is normally like a concrete base so you're getting slammed straight onto concrete. Doesn't matter what the mat is. There's no give in it. 
Um, I think about when you started, it was just pull out the old judo mats. I don't mind that. Do pulled out judo mats in the fucking gym hall. We do jigsaw mats, wasn't it? <laughs> you see your toe stuck in between mm-hmm. them, you fucking yeah, the they first were, time. Right. It was raised right off the floor, man. It was it yeah. was good. Um, and then obviously that allows a wee bit of ventilation in. Mm-hmm. So the gym's well set up. It's got a cold plunge pool, a sauna. It's just in and it's right next to the boxing gym as well. So like I, I'm not sure what the membership's like, if you can get a membership for both, because the two of them are linked. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm not sure. But it's right next to Kinnick's gym and Great facility. Um, myself and James were there, and James James was like straight off the bat. He's like, um, "So we're going to show you some moves, um, but we're going to do triangles, and I'm going to have a triangle off against Paul because I think my triangles are better than Paul's." I was like, "You dirty bastard!" And he's like, "I'll go first. I think we done rock paper scissors, and he won. First triangle he shows is my triangle." It shows my Kennedy Ninchecku. I was saying his name's like Ninchechu, whatever it is. So anyway, big Kennedy. Aye, big K-Dog. So he shows that, and then he's like, right, you're Tom Paul. So then I showed him the Jamal Hill one with a with a mirror lock into the triangle. And then he shows like side control uh, mount triangle, and then I show a flying triangle. But brilliant day. Um, we were only there for an hour. It was Easter Sunday, mm-hmm. and then I had to rush back and spend time with the kids. Got your eggs to roll, painting eggs. Mm-hmm. I went full Millhouse this year. Drew a painted Millhouse on my egg. <laughs> <laughs> I never painted an egg. No, no, nah. not do it. No, nah. we had like three Easter egg hunts for the wee ones, and my son is kind of at that age now where he's like, he's like he just joined in with one of them. Do any think the, the Easter bunny's a shit, shit character for Easter? Or just in general, like when you think about Santa, Santa's the OG, right? And you've got the Easter. Where goes your house, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you, it's the fucking because it's old time, isn't it? It's before Christianity, the rabbit fucking spring. Bairns are coming in that. Is that what it's meant to be? I, I have no idea. I think so. I think it's, it's just, just sh- old. It is just a shit holiday. <laughs> like, <laughs> can't love it now, but what's the other fucking. When did you ever. What did you get for when you were a boy for I Easter? I just love chocolate, mate. I don't you got an Easter egg and that was it. There's kids <laughs> no, getting no, no. fucking presents. You got everything. an Easter egg and a cup. A cup, aye. Right. A cup. You, get, you always got a mug mm-hmm. and he'd be in the cupboard for like 30 years. Cadbury's mug. <laughs> Is this actually a German tradition, the Easter bunny? Of course it is. All aye. European traditions are German. Germanic. Hmm. <laughs> There you go, look at, look at the old Beaster Bunny with the fucking slacks on, <laughs> horn in the pocket. Like Did you, you say Beaster Bunny? <laughs> That's what I thought he said. The old Beaster Bunny. But he does get a bit of the Beastie Boy about him, and he's like, hey, you want some candy? It's like somebody you want to see my eggs? You want to see my chocolate eggs? <laughs> somebody that works in Ralph Lauren, man. What do you get uh, up to? So you on Friday night, yeah. or you went to see the... Went to the hockey. The hockey. It was good. I liked it. I had a good time. Did you I'd never a, been before. Did so you get a wee foot on, Chris? No, I don't think it no. No, I, I got a bit of chicken and rice actually. It was decent. I was listening for the the downstairs up was for the like the for f- you, but mm-hmm. just it was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. So same. So did the boy enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. Did he, he get to do the fist bump? It we did. Hi, he was loving it. every bit. Of it. It's so fu- like I had no idea this was so fucking kid friendly. It was he was loving it, and then see the like throwing the pucks at the. Is it called Clangus? Mm-hmm. The fucking wee Highland cow. Ma- so the kids get pucks and try and happen? Aye. So, so what, I, what you put your name and number on it, aye. and whoever get one gets picked to get the... Is it they get a draw. Aye. Or aye. They can That's win money. It's aye. like a raffle type thing, but you just lob <laughs> the pucks. Just it. fucking chuck the pucks on the ice. That, and then that they, happens at football matches as well. With the teddies. Bo- Dortmund do something like but that. But it's aye. no... Pucks or thing. <laughs> it's normally like... Fucking balls, coins. Balls, cans. I know. It was Clangus? That's him there. And then it cuts about and get pictures with it. I don't know, it was just good, eh? It was a good atmosphere. Exactly. He, had, he had a great time. How, I tried did the, how did the clan get on? They go beat. The was 5-1, <laughs> I think it was. They Dundee. Aye. Aye. They got an overtime one other yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. Aye. Aye. 3-2. So they can still get the playoffs if they win this Sunday. I tried to get tickets for this Sunday, there's none. When you just hit up the... Uh, I don't like to... I do like to do that. But I couldn't get, there's odd seats here and there, but there isn't like four together because I thought, I'll take my wee lassie as well. She'd like it. Mm-hmm. But uh, my son, he was fucking love it. Then like, as soon as 
a fight started in like four minutes or three minutes or something. He was like, ah, I can't fight on the night. He was loving it. Eh? He's trying to get his phone out and video it and send it to his pal. And I was that's like, that's cool. quality. It was they very just good. just announced a season ticket buyback. So if you check, they might I be saw it, tickets aye. available. They give you like a tenner for your ticket back and, it, and you can watch the stream for free or something if you can't go. So that's they're, all, good. they're just trying to fill it. And it was mm. it was full, eh? We couldn't. Eh? That's brilliant. I didn't really see any spare seats. And it was like a nice atmosphere as well. There was no. And people are walking about, they're having beers, they're fucking eating, they're. Everything was cool. And we were right beside the Dundee fans. Aye. They did drums and shit, so... It was a good atmosphere. Yeah, it? it was. There was a few people with drums and things like, ah, it's not the same as, like... It's 3,600, I think. I so... When what's, the, what's the number for Cage Warriors? I think that'll be close to four, eh? I was trying to look oh. at it for... So when you see where the cage would be and then how many more people you could put down on the rink, I think that'll be closer to four. See for the, 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 the <coughs> rink, do they cover the rink up or do they actually just take it out? I asked that Cody that, and he said they put stuff down on it. They melt it. Really? Uh, they melt it down for the summer. <laughs> so after... When's the season over? Sunday. This Sunday? This Sunday this coming, aye. Well, if they get the playoffs, then aye. you go into, like, best of seven games. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't win this Sunday, that's and that What does him. the playoff get them? I fucking don't know. <laughs> it's like the trophy they play for. Like, like, like the Stanley, Stanley Cup. Cup. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. right. Cool. I thought that's because I said to that Cody, the big tall guy, like, what do they do? And he said, oh, they put stuff over it. But if you're saying maybe, they melt it, they fucking Maybe they do that if there's like a, a, a venue during season. Because mm -hmm. I don't imagine it's very well, cost got, effective. They've got like Colour Fest coming up as well. So that's like the. Who do that in there? Aye. Uh, Jenga Boys and all that. Is it? Oh, that'd be brilliant. I seen it yesterday. I used to go every year and then it's like, it was just DJs and it was like, Venga Boys. We had a colour fest you know, collaboration. You had a fucking and see <laughs> up there. Aye, so, so you're going to... Uh, that was Obviously that's a swing. So you're going to Brayhead to get your, like, shopping for your holidays and then there's wee guys out their dial Aye. ready for colour fest. So, Thank you, John. So they have it on, like, the outside at the boardwalk bit at the water, you know. Have you been around that side? Like the back end of it? Aye. So that's like their stages and tents here, then it goes into the inside the oh, actual wow. arena. That actually mm -hmm. so pretty good. Uh, aye. So but it's an odd day shot, so it stops at like four in the morning. But you're in there for like fucking twelve, and it's usually a hot day. Well, when I used to go, <laughs> and you're just out in the boardwalk, get listen to some fucking DJ out your tits. The, and then as the night progresses, you end up in the big arena, you see the bigger DJs. The bigger main DJs. Event. What's the, give me a, give me a good story. A wee, a wee old school story. A good story right away. So we're in the fucking lineup getting searched. Me and all my mates who've just got off this minibus. Like, and the dog sits down straight away. 20 years <laughs> right. someday, someday we know. <laughs> I'll tell you half of you. Um, so they put you in single files, and then the dogs come up and down you. So they only let you in drips and drabs. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, um, well, as the dogs went by, my mate. Who we know is just bolted, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking Full on sprint. Linford Christie bolted, and everybody's just like, What the fuck? And everybody's like, Catch him. And all. we're all just laughing. Like, so he bolted in? Aye. Oh, brilliant. Right. So you right can do. the main arena, right in there, and just started just peeling, like, mm -hmm. he's trying to tap off his t shirt off. And apparently just went and stood at the front, like, kidding on. He was like, Raven. Raven. Bit, like, as if he'd been in for hours. That's the tactic. And when I, I bumped into him, I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? Is that? Or the, my stuff fell out my pocket and I just wrapped it and just ran. <laughs> <laughs> so where he was, was just a big bag of whatever. Not and uh, he just pulled it though, but we all were under pressure like, oh shit, what's going on here? <laughs> but I, we eventually met up with him like half an hour later and he was, he was fine, you know what I mean? But uh, it was funny. I didn't I know just, that was just going in. <laughs> I didn't have as good luck at the... Highland Showground used to do Tiesto and all the same type of stuff, standing in the queue, and I can remember them just walking along with the dog and just be like, Is that uh, a place? Ah, it's a place. Right. And I the don't. dog just sitting straight down beside you, and you just stand there like you can't even see it. Eh? <laughs> you know, you know how to touch a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Don't touch a dog. And the boy just, All right, mate. <sighs> Come with us. Hey, bother. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, do you have anything you shouldn't eat? Aye. Watch this geezer, and if can, you can just go. Aye, hey, bother. Just let you in there. No, no, let me go, and then I just joined the queue again and gave the boy at the front twit yeah, to let me in. But that was when I was like 18. Now it'd be a fucking QR code, be a nightmare to get in. Even club nights like at a normal nightclub QR code scan you in it's a shame because you'll get boys we get all the time they buy a ticket on Twitter and it's just a fucking QR code and they've been done eh? wow. so they've paid 50 quid and then they go oh, my ticket doesn't mm -hmm. you're buying them on Twitter buddy what do you fucking expect right. or you get a lot of people they scan their ticket 
they come like right at the start for the opening, scan their ticket, they go straight in and then they post the ticket on Twitter. So it looks legit. They come to the front door and then boom, already been scanned and the boy's fucked. Mm. So it's a bit of a shite one, but you take your chance when you buy buy these things online. Right. Do you know what I mean? Gone are the days you could just give some sound cunts in the front door 20 quid and come in. Can you do that? No, really. I nah, can, you can't because they, it's usually an outside promoter. So unless like the lassies on the cash desk or the people who do the scanning or sound. So I used to do it at Tea in the Park. We used to, you would get all the scanners stand. You come up the queue and the guys scan your ticket. It used to be, I don't know what's his name because he still works at that company, but they would scan your ticket and then if they got caught when the police would just go to us, can you just uh, see them out and deactivate their ticket and that. And we would go, I ain't bother. So I had like the gun that activates your ticket or deactivates it and I would just go, buddy, you've got 30 seconds to give me all the money in your wallet and I'll just let you go straight back in. And they would just go, nay bother. Boom. And I'd just let them go. Oh, and done it. Everyone done sure, it. Every, I'm going to hustle. I, I'm just, I'd be like, you've got 30 seconds because we're like walking back to the gates and like, it's now or never, Ken. It was 250 quid for a weekend ticket at the time. So it's up to it you. It's been deactivated. And these were guys who'd been caught with like a joint or something like that. And the police are chucking them out. I'm like, fucking hell. And you know what I mean? Like if they caught you with anything, they put you. That's shit. But if they caught you with stuff they thought you were selling, obviously they arrested you. But if it's like a pill, a wee bit of powder, a fucking joint, they're chucking cunts out. So I would just go, just open your wallet, my man. You can go straight back in like nothing's happened. Man, got to hustle. I know. Like got to help out the people. But I can't do it for free. Well, well, I can't I'm do it for the people, but the people got to pay. I know. Robin Hood wasn't doing it for fuck all. <laughs> kept a wee bit of the gold. <laughs> he, he, he distributed the gold amongst the poor. Ish. Kept a wee bit. He's made Marion to be taken out. Do you know what I mean? So, fucking, it used to be much more relaxed back then. Now people are. Nobody's even got cash. That's the thing. Nobody's even got cash on them, so you can't do it. So I normally keep my, <clears throat> my card in the back of my. My phone, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, maybe Apple's MagSafe things. Aye. I took it off the other night to um, put a charger on it, like a wireless charger, and I never put it back on. So when I went to get my hair cut today, I'd get a haircut, boys, just for the podcast. Went and got a haircut today. I didn't have any means to get money. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Like, and I don't have money in my pockets. Mm-hmm. I didn't, and I'm like... Right now, who is? I'm like, I'm literally like... I promise I'll I'm, come back with I'm it. going to be late. I'm going to be late for my appointment. And I don't have money for it. I just said to the guy I was like, listen, mate. I'll drop money in. <laughs> you're, cutting, you're cutting my hair. You need to do something with this. A sign card then. Uh, you're cutting the hair. Um, I, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to dye it a wee bit more blonder. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep you might up. as well now. Keep it up. What do you think, Craig? Go, go full fucking blonde. Go Oliveira in Brazil. All right. Hey, we've got a few weeks. Um, so I had a phone call last night with Lee, the nutritionist, and I, I thought he was going to cut my calories. I was on this phone call, FaceTiming him, and I was like, I didn't want to do the call because I was like, this motherfucker's going to cut my calories. <laughs> Why is that? Are you, about are you over? I'm not over. I just know as it gets closer to the time, you know, he starts to reduce them, reduce them because he wants to see bigger. What are you for? Four, Four weeks, weeks out. I, you two, three. Two on Saturday, aye. Two on Saturday, I'm two I'm after five. that. I'm five. Aye. Is it? Four? I mm. think I'm leaving four and I fight the week after that, so it's five. Right. Am I right in saying that? But you, the first? The fourth. fourth. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was I was like, this motherfucker, fuck this guy. And I told Adam, I'd went out the other night to have, and I had a pizza for him, like my way with the family Easter. And Adam's yeah, grass, yeah. Adam's grass, man. Yeah, and, fucking and, screw grass, and bastard. I, <laughs> <laughs> Adam Wasby's a grass, pass it on. <laughs> and then he's like, so, so Lee asked me, what was your weight today? And I'm like, um, it was a wee bit over the, where we, and then Adam's just in the background chuckling, tell me what you had. It's like, fuck you. Um, but it was, I had, I didn't put any weight on, but just because I had my dinner late that lot, like, because if you have food late, normally I'll, I'll stop eating at o'clock and that gives it enough time to go through my body. Mm-hmm. Digest when I step in the, mo- the scales in this morning. In the morning, it's a more accurate representation of my weight, but because I ate late, I never wasn't man- didn't manage to go through the whole process of digestion. Mm-hmm. And I was he- slightly heavier than I would normally have been. And, uh, when do you stop eating at night? What time, roughly? Nine o'clock? Eight, eight o'clock. Eight. eight o'clock. I just like to have like an empty stomach, going to sleep, 
and I allow the body just to sleep better wake anyway. Sleep wake up later anyway, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just like it gives me a truer reflection. I eat all my calories, um, but there's some nights where, like a Monday night where we don't finish till like the session finishes at eight, so I'm in the car physically eating my dinner. So I'm trying. Yeah, to you've got to be prepped up. Like yeah. you're looking a bit more cheerful though, uh, like normally than you would be. The last camp for in Vegas, it was shattered because. I went back to back with a fight camp, mm-hmm. so my body never get enough time to recover and get all the nutrients back in it. Lee's right there as well, so it's always like you're constantly having to think about. It. There's no. Do you, want a, do you want a protein bar? Is Lee watching? <laughs> not then. I don't want a protein bar. <laughs> like, see if Lee's not there. I'm fucking chewing down that protein bar, and that's what I said to him on that phone call last night. I was like, um, "It's the Oreo protein bars. <clears throat> They're good, eh? They're wee cocksuckers. The grenade like, ones. See the white chocolate Oreo." Yeah. Oh fucking hell man mm. And I put it in the fridge or the freezer Because then it's solid And then when you bite it It's solid And then you've got to like Savour it mm-hmm. Rather than just going <laughs> <laughs> like, Just stab it in your face Like Oh I want another one Never Anaconda's got some new equipment um, For support And Ross is currently rocking the shoulder They've got a whole host of stuff Like um, the new ankle brace They've got the original knee brace Which is their, their flagship for their equipment, knees, ankles, wrists, you name it, Anaconda's got your back. Why not check them out as well for their kit? And if you're a leathered customer, a leathered podcast subscriber, listener, what's the link? At the checkout, you can put in leather 10 for 10% off. You can get two rash guards just now or any two products for $59. You can get a rash guard for $24.95. I think that's all the offers on at the moment. So if you have got any long-term injuries or you're looking just to spruce up your gym, gym attire, then why not check out Anaconda? Ross, where can you find Anaconda? Anacondafightwear.co Or just hit the link in the bio. And as Ross said, Ross, what are the deals at the moment? Twenty four ninety five for any rash guard or any two products for fifty nine ninety nine. Guys, don't suffer in silence. Let Anaconda look after you. My advice for them that it's doing a weight cut or watching what they're eating, dieting, sit down and eat your dinner. There's times where I'll just fucking eat it as I'm like walking back to the table and it's finished with you. Oh, fucking. Didn't even savour that. Like a dog. Um, but it's probably one of the worst parts of camping it is watching what you're eating. Because I you didn't watch. It. I just fucking eat it. In. Has, has a, has an <laughs> nah, effect, not quite. <laughs> not it's quite. Like, you think about how shitty, Chris, it's been when we've when we've no followed our diet properly and it's had a negative effect on the weight cut right. in comparison to when we follow it. And well, that last cut, last fight for me was easy. the easiest weight cut for me because I had taken it much more seriously, right. to be fair. I guess it's that thing as well. Like, one of the reasons I didn't want to go full-time as a fighter was because then it's your job right. and you need to take it seriously. And if you're not taking it seriously like, and you fuck up, then you're like, oh, but I wasn't taking it serious because it's not my job. But you're only telling yourself that. Yep. It's only, that's just a lie you're telling yourself because you've got everybody else going, oh, you look great and you're doing great, you're in great shape and I've said, that's fucking strict as fuck this diet. But you know yourself when you're cutting corners. You know when you're letting, you can say it to yourself, ah, you've got every cunt else fucking filled, but I know what you've been doing. Right. That's the difference, eh? So if you're happy lying to yourself as well, that's cool, but... Mm-hmm. You know yourself, you can. You know when you do something you shouldn't. You know when you fucking could have made it to training and you didn't go. You know when you just went, ah, fuck it. I had I started off with shite food this morning and I just carried it on through the day. I went out fucking bevy and there's cunts do that before fights. They just go out fucking drinking. What's like, real Jimmy Jones, doesn't it? <laughs> so he says. I do you not believe it? Nah. I, I think do you he, believe it? No. Nah. That he drinks, parties. That he parts, parts I don't, the week, I don't, week before, isn't it? I, I don't believe that's true. I think he's maybe done it a few times. <coughs> And you get away with it because he's so skillful and better than everybody else. But mm-hmm. I'm going to put it by. Do you, you think know. one I night could out? Do it. I just I, I prefer not to do it. Mm-hmm. Do you think one night out is going to have a massive impact on your what you've done for twelve weeks? No, no, a week before, no, no, no a week. So. But on the week of though, he's saying he's saying he's fucking drink no week right up until. <laughs> so I don't know. No, the week before I did it, I think you'll be all right. The LGSP used to like a glass of red wine. Has a red wine after training, eh? Mm-hmm. Still does it now. Says it's good for his heart and that. No, the tonic. Maybe. <laughs> Getting bust. Yeah. Busting the tonic, John Jones style. Did you watch the fights at the weekend? I watched the Weidman one <laughs> and Buckley. The eye poke. This was the controversy eye poke where people are like, we need to sort these gloves. 
how do we sort them? I felt like Weidman fucking meant to poke him in the eye. <laughs> it's kind of how it looked. They've done it four times. Right? Aye, it's a, it was especially... I don't know. I, I thought it, it looked quite deli- It looked quite intentional to me. Hands open. Did he lose a point? No. No. Fucking won the fight. Hmm. <laughs> so, no. but, but then the commission have looked at and overthrown, overturned it hmm. to his unanimous decision win because he was up on the scorecards two ten eight rounds. I think that was right. Mm-hmm. So he's they've went to the scorecards anyway and given it to Weidman as a unanimous decision. He's just he's uh, appealing it. Who, Weidman's appealing it. His opponents appealing it. Bruno. Aye, definitely. It, w- it would be hard to say that was accidentally. Mm-hmm. Maybe one or maybe one. I'll give you one. But they looked fucking. P- Aye, p- fingers were always out. Which see was if, annoying thing. See if we just punished them straight off the bat. But, but so what do you do? Do you like if you've got VAR in football? Surely you can have somebody at the side watching and being like, right, that's a finger and eye. Just straight right. lose a point. I'm sure I've seen them do that. And, look, and reset the position, eh? I'm sure I've seen Goddard check a replay for an eye poke or an illegal knee or something. Like and then deducted a point. See if you were see if changed it was done the outcome str- of the fight. I'm right. sure he changed it to a no contest or something. Like that. I'm sure mm-hmm. I watched a fight that bet on. They so called him through for the back. You're fucking right, Herb Dean. Was it Herb Dean? Ah, uh, um, but that one, like he poked him in the first round. They poked him in the second round. But the second round, the two of them came out. One, he went with his fist and Wyman was always going with the fingers out. And then in the actual finish of the fight, he's caught him twice with both like hands. Like boom, boom. And then right he's dropped. And then he's finished him because he's mm. dropped him. And, and he's kind of just covered his so face. That and should have been reviewed. That finish should have been reviewed. Mm-hmm. Uh, like them then. What about, like, how do, we, how do you fix it? Do you think it's these gloves that kind of roll your hands in a bit? No, I don't. I you, don't still need, you still need to grapple with that. I know. Who was it? Pride was it, it Bellator? Pride. Pride had the, the curve. The curve in it. Mm-hmm. I think Bellator tried to do something as well with their gloves, but I don't know if they do it now. But it seems to be the same. People are always guilty of the eye poking. Mm-hmm. It does always seem to be the same. Like, Weidman didn't he do it once and then the guy turned his face away and got TKO'd. He'd done it more than once. And, and that's the, the thing. See if, you've, see if you've trained your whole... See if you've trained for that 12 weeks or 10 weeks, whatever your fight camp run. Mm-hmm. And you get an eye poke and they go, can you see? And you say, no, I cannot see. Then that goes down as a no contest because you can't see. Mm-hmm. So you've... So the vast majority of fighters are going to be like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the eye poke mm-hmm. and, and going to continue with blood vision or whatever the, the, the effects is. As I've brought up before... When I fought Kennedy, he fingered my, and um, I couldn't see out it. Mm-hmm. Like I literally couldn't see it. It'd, like scratched my retina. So even that, the body. next day you see some of these guys, their faces are a fucking mess. Where mm-hmm. it gets infected, their eyes are st- like, you know yourself. How, how many people have you poked in eye? None. <laughs> Did a lot of fights, eh? <laughs> Many people you poked in the eye. None. None. It's the same fucking people who do it all the time. Tell you who else was a cunt for it. DC. He was fucking horrendous for it. John Jones, aye. He would have his hands right out like that. Mm-hmm. John Jones horrendous for it. That fucking Kennedy, he's still doing it. It's always the same guys doing it. And so when they come in, they tell you, it's, <clears> like, it's an up palm, isn't yeah. it? They're that, clear as fuck. Either like this is an up You'll hear palm. the referee shouting, hat, your I finger. I the referee then. Aye. I was like, so what's this? What, what's, what's, what's this you've got put up here? These are the... Hingway's types. coach's gloves, aren't they? Justin Gaethje's coach's gloves, his name's went out my head. Aye, so they're Trevor, Trevor Whitman's gloves That's that it. he's designed, mm-hmm. and everyone raves about them. Joe Rogan's always talking about them, saying that they're a perfect balance between prohibiting or preventing eye pokes while also still giving the fighters the ability to grapple. So if, 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 if you're looking to base, if you're looking to put your hand on the mat and base to get up, mm-hmm. and your hands are that's unable, to, Aye, unable, that's true, to, actually. unable to get a, a proper full palm flat in the mat then there's going to be an issue or taking a wrist or anything aye aye and it I don't know I would have to see because a wrist once if I was a ref before I'm like listen this is your warning before the fight started <laughs> don't eye poke and then when they date in the fight you've got a point off because I've mm-hmm. already told you through the back I've told you in the cage I, I agree with that like, if you so do, it's down to the ref they mm-hmm. like be stricter and then when they date they can't complain and I agree obviously but then see if you're putting an absolute beating on somebody and an eye poke occurs it can totally change the whole outcome of a fight. For sure. Mm-hmm. And it's not to do with how skilled you are as a... You win a fight through DQ, or few through... Well, just her. <laughs> so then the ref needs to look at it and say, was that accidental, or is he taking a beat and then just... He's just tried to level the playing field here with 
when then you know that's a that's a DQ. You know, mm-hmm. You've actually meant to do that. Mm-hmm. But some people, when they're throwing that king, can we just catch them or brush them a wee bit? <sighs> you can tell what he's not know. really meant that. If it's like sometimes they throw in the thumb aye, part, kind of. Get, can, aye, I get it. That, that can, can be a warning or a point off. But if the guy is really like fucking. It felt like to me like Weidman's were dead. Aye, DQ, basically. Man. I really learned how to fight. It I mean? felt to me like Weidman's were. I'm not wanting to say they were intentional, but he definitely wasn't making any effort not to poke him in the eye. No, he was. He, he was like that. He was like that. Right. But he he was he was he was fighting well. He was like mm-hmm. kick, like the amount of kicks he was thrown with the leg that it got broke was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he was proving a point with that. Grappling away. against the cage was great. So he was winning the rounds. He was doing good. That was just just uh, ruined it for me. Mm-hmm. The eye pokes. His his eye was bad as well. Mm-hmm. His eye was quite. It was shut. Not near enough. So. Punch, I think it was a punch. Aye. And what was the Buckley fight like? <laughs> Fucking Buckley just. I think Loki <laughs> quit. Just gave up on half his back and just got pounded out. Man, mm-hmm. that was weird. Again, no sure. It could be one of the ones similar to like see when Colby fought Leon. Obviously, that was now one hundred percent Colby. There was no way. Looks like match fixing to me, man. <laughs> Are you going with that one? <laughs> aye. Um, aye. Just, just in fact. It, he just went to his back, remember? He didn't really get dropped. Who was it was just talking about the Max Fix? Was it you, Craig? Aye. I'm going to grass you in. Craig, you want to go for it? So, after the fight, Buckley had posted a video uh, on Twitter or Instagram uh, alleging that he's seen Vicente Luque with James Krause and like James Krause was giving him a pat on the back saying, oh, you've done well and handed him something. Hmm. But whether that's true or not... I find it hard it? to believe he'd do that in a place oh, he could be it seen doing it. Fool, wasn't it? Or was it? Fool, or was it? Yeah. Yeah. That was what Buckley yeah, that, that said. That video was an April Fool. Oh, right. Right. But he was like, and then I heard him whisper, you did a good job. Like, it was, it was, it was right, an April <laughs> Fool. Right. But like, he did though, it looked like quitting the fight. It looked all he day. He fell his back and then he went to half guard Then he was pounding away for about a minute. Mm. And then he just started getting heavier and then he was just curled up and he was just stopped. Buckley said the same thing. It was like he didn't want to be in with him or he didn't want to be there. Aye. Like, look, he didn't want to be there. Which it seems mental because he's a fucking pretty scrappy guy. Like, he's never... But then it's that thing where it's like something can happen in your fight camp which mm-hmm. makes it right. I can't actually go hundred percent in this position, mm-hmm. and he's just got him in a position where he's just went in anyway. I think he's a, is he older? Lucky, I know he's fought for a while. Yeah. Was he not meant to fight? He was meant to fight Gary just recently yeah. in that one that we were all smoked up, man. Mm. Uh, for sure, if that's how he was. <laughs> Buckley <Bug-like laughs> Gary would be a good fight now. Mm-hmm. Probably going to be in the sort of direction they go away. Eh? I want to see the Gary versus MVP. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the thing. That's the one. Yeah, probably doesn't want it. Do you know? Does he know? He said he doesn't want it. Why? Because he's lower than them in the rankings. Is that what he said? Mm-hmm. But I think he's shooting for the Covington fight, isn't he? Aye, yeah, that yeah, looks pretty much his like wife's it. definitely shooting for that fight. <laughs> Well, they were Somebody both shooting. They, <laughs> they both had loads to say <laughs> on social media, and then it just went bump and stopped. So usually, they. That's the kind of sign, isn't it? They must have signed to fight. Mm-hmm. Or signed to fight someone else. Well, there's that as well. Mm-hmm. But this week's UFC is Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis, is that right? Yeah. This is the one we would have been on right. yep. if we'd taken that fight. I don't really like Brendan Allen, to be fair. I don't I think he's quite annoying to listen to. And you know who else can I take criticism? <laughs> Fucking... Jamal Hill, man. Like, Jamal takes everything mad personally. So much, man. Like, is he on socials? Mm-hmm. What's he he what, can't take a bit of... Uh, he's been putting a lot of social media back out again, which is, is TikToks could be quite funny sometimes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But uh, like you say, it, it seems anybody has a shot at him. He oh, not yeah. only takes it quite badly, he's replying to them. Uh, like, you're doing exactly he what you... He did that. Like, that he did it to you. That, that wasn't <laughs> he was, but there was quite a lot of hate towards him <clears throat> with regards to me and him fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, and he took that as, that was me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, coming after me. And I was like, man, I ain't going to be for empty in this fucking sport. <laughs> There's nobody in this division <laughs> or in this sport that I'm like, this motherfucker. But mm-hmm. he, he built up this picture where I was, I was uh, the bad guy and he was mm-hmm. a good guy. And, and I do understand Maybe that is what it is Because I, I, I spoke to him after it And he was like He was getting a lot of racial Abuse Oh And he was He was then saying if that They're Paul Craig fans And that's why they're giving me racial abuse And I'm like Nah they're no fans of mine man yeah, I don't know about that The what? race card just getting through it there Like In Twitter the Guys just like to say that He's got to get beaten It's just like Disney take it away at all and So I was trying to break down Potan and him And you're just like 
Just to accept people think you're going to lose, mate. It's, not, it's just somebody's for, opinion, not really. Some people are like, aye, that's it. Like, it's, there's only... One of these is going to lose. It's a fucking one versus one sport. So you pick your guy, don't you? Did I tell you about a Russian guy who was uh, nailing me? Some Russian guy was fucking hounding me, right? All the time. Online? Online. And I was like, screen grabbed him and... What's this? Mm. What so I, I was just searching Jamal Hill and like the lead up to your fight. And that's what one of his quotes was there. If you want to read that back. Uh, I don't think I'll read I that. I don't know if we part. should read that. Like, <laughs> I don't think I'll read that. Scotland's new hate crime bill means we can't say that. Thanks, Hamza. <laughs> you wank. Well, that's, that's hate crime right there. <laughs> nah, I don't hate him. I hate him just for being a politician, not for anything else. That's still hate crime, but... How? So, uh, am I right in saying, Craig, you'll know better than me. They always had the hate the, the hate crime with regards to religious, like, hatred. I believe so, aye. And now they've just added in age, gender, and gender, and all this other shit that goes along with it. Is that pretty much it? majority of the protected characteristics are, like, now involved in it. Mm. What do you mean protected? Just pretty much what Paul said, it's age, gender, race, Everybody, if you've got, sexual orientation. So if I call you a ginger bastard and you take mm. offence to that, you could be like... Phew. That's a hate crime. That's a hate crime. Mm. Is, is ginger on the list bit? If ginger's not on the list... <laughs> Then what's the point in this podcast? I know, we? we're done for. We've got to get lifted. I know. Mm. Well, they said they're not going to come after fucking that type of thing, eh? It's got to be like... But they're going to hit... For what, they can come for what after to, They're for saying what they won't believe, do that, for what but they will. to believe is, if somebody says that they've been offended by what you've said, mm-hmm. that has to be investigated by the police. Mm-hmm. Am I correct in saying that? I'm not 100% sure on that. I know for a fact, though, that like... In terms of this podcast, for example, like it's still hundred percent okay to discuss it and debate about it, as long as you're not targeting specific people and expressing hatred towards them. So, open, engaging in a debate is obviously still hundred percent acceptable. It's always be. It should never not be. Hmm. But this is what they're trying to do now. So it's, it's take a wee bit away at a time, eh? Wee bit away at a time, wee bit away at a time. Didn't want you saying. I heard him the other day calling Joe Rogan a right wing actor, right? How's that then? You're a right wing actor. The guy's had more left wing fucking people on his podcast than probably anyone's ever seen. It's fucking mental. Hamza Yusuf didn't get voted in either way. So he should be fucking binned off. I think what Al did comments on it. What did he say? He basically just said on Sunday there's got to be forty eight to fifty thousand people all breaking the law. Including himself. Oh, and oh, the old, oh, the old firm game. Aye. And of course so what is gonna they're just fucking songs. The cunts actually care. They're just songs, mate. It's fucking silly. I don't know, am I wrong? Is it just, there must be loads of people saying the same thing. It's the same thing for the LGBT thing. It's the same. I got fucking abused off another person with fucking purple hair the other night. Don't slag my, don't slag my kid. <sighs> this was a woman. Tell me. So, she, uh, knocked her husband back for being fucking bevied. And then they were moaning because they didn't have, you needed cash for entry because our card machine was down. So I was like, oh, it's cash for entry tonight. Ca- who carries cash? I was like, we deal literally thousands of cash transactions a week. And she's like, no one carries cash. You're wrong. And I goes, all right, what is it you do? She said, well, I certainly don't stand outside of a nightclub in the rain like you. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And then she was like, you're so condescending. I'm like, you're just fucking, do what you say to me, you fucking idiot. I'm like, Ken, what today? Fuck off with you and your boyfriend, eh? And he wasn't saying a word. He was just walking out of there. And, and she was like, I work in the arts. I'm like, I, the fucking stupid hair gave it away. Like, of course you work in the arts. Like, no real person's going to employ you. No real fucking, uh, and that's the and first Ro- time we get pinged. All right, Hamza's right, bros. Hamza, Hamza likes me, Chris, mate. Chris, give you your thoughts on this. I'm a Muslim, so I'm cool. I'm not touching I can it. say all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I'm not touching <laughs> it. I say anything I want. So I long as you're Muslim, the, say what you fifth. want. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Mashallah, brothers. If you are looking for a bet in this week's UFC, you know where to go. Ross, where is that place? McBookie, our official betting partner. And if you hit the link in our bio, you will be able to get what? Deposit £5, you get £20 of free bets only for MMA bets and only for new customers who follow the Leather Podcast. So why not make this week's UFC exciting by betting with McBookie? What about, uh, (laughs) if we're not going to get you coming coming on with this, what about TikTokers fighting? Can we get you on that? Can we get you to rise? Nah, I'm not touching that either, I do. Ross can take her. I was there. Take the lead. I was there. I was working it. It was bad. Was it terrible? Really bad. I'd obviously <laughs> seen the comments and was it Ben that was watching it? 
Yeah. I think there was like a live stream. Where's, where's fucking worse then? Oh, there he is. Yes. Here Hold we on. go. Let's move on. on. Fucking going to the event or streaming the event, paying money. I was working the event, so I got paid to be That's there. That's worse, because you're actually visualising it with your own eyeballs, man. What do you mean? I got paid. Ah, yeah. I'm <laughs> well, watch your fucking wall, man. It was, Just turn around and... It was aye. like that. It was, aye. honestly, it was a shame. Some of it was a fucking shame, eh? What sort so, of crowd was there, Ross? Like, aye. is it young people? Or? Younger people. There yeah. was there was young cunts who come to liquid rooms for techno nights and that. Retards, man. There was a lot of them, too. There were a lot of fifers, eh? A lot of fifers. <laughs> a lot of people who had trouble reading the menu at the bar. A lot of problems. <laughs> So uh, I dig over the bridge it's just so you know. Don't mention any names. Uh, we'll no fucking gear in my fucking. I'm no welcome over the bridge. I know that. I'd fucking stay this side of it. But aye, a lot of problems with fifers. The Ouija crowd who were there were all right. They weren't too bad. Um, don't promote any of them on this show. No, no. It, the boxers. Aye. There was one fight I would say was competitive, but that's it. The other ones were a shame. There was one wee guy with like, he had like Brad Pitt hair and fury who just like wrapped it during the fight. Just He was like full on like hands up going, no, <laughs> like turning around and that. And then he's got the fucking brass neck to jump in the ring after and he's got the microphone and he's going rematch, rematch. It's fucking embarrassing. They had this lassie in the middle doing all the MC and it just, oh, some of the stuff, mate, it was cringy as fuck. They had a raffle, then they had this one where everyone got an envelope, your phone went up, so they were trying to get everyone to be quiet so they could phone the winner inside the venue. Everyone's just going fucking mentally, telling them what it was, ah, fucking shut up. <laughs> it was just every bit, yeah. It's a shame because they were trying to raise money for charity, was what they were doing. Fuck. But, aye, fuck them. What was, what was a fight camp? Oh, I was trying to fight my uncle off in the shower, you know what I mean? Like, That's it. Off. Honestly, some of them, it was a shame. Fucking idiot. And then man. the very first fight, like, one boy clearly won it by miles, and then they just gave it to the other cunt, eh? I'm like, and I said that to the two guys here, Riley's gaff. I'm like, what's the score? They just give the fucking, the winner's the one with the most followers on TikTok. What happened here? It was fucked up. The whole thing was proper a shame. And then... Fucking just seen an old guy beating up a young guy at the end in the the main event and that like mate, <laughs> you've talked a lot of talk here and your fucking uncle's pals came in and punched you about. It's just fucking a shame, mate. It was a shame, mate. His birds in the ring crying at the end with the microphone going cheater, cheat. Ah, oh, I was sad for everyone right, involved. Eh. Spoke out enough about. I this, know, man. I know. The cunt's mum I chinned one of the cornermen. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, just fight fifers, mate. They just can't behave. They get fucking over the bridge. They start seeing like big cities and that railway lines, bright lights, <laughs> and they just they just get, they just get out of control. Yeah. Restaurants, yeah, I can't. The line, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Eh? Coming, it's like coming to America. That's what they're like. On it. People are laughing, but I'm telling you, these fifers, they never cross the bridge, eh? and when they do, they can't behave. What a shame. It's a sad night for, for social media. Anyway, I feel better now. <laughs> I could go on because there was much more please stupidity. Mind, there, was, there was a lot more. <laughs> Some of the fucking two of the guys were trained by actual, three of the guys were trained by actual professional boxers. This is the fucking maddest bit. So, I bet. They go, they were doing it I for mean, money. Well, I bet they were doing it for money as well. Professional boxers. One of them for sure is. Aye. I, you know. <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> if you're a punch bag, does that mean you're a professional boxer? Not mean. So, put uh, these under like professional rules or was it just white collar? White uh, collar? Uh, I don't know. Could, I mean, they had, I think it would have been 16 ounce gloves. Some of them had their t-shirts off. Some of them had their t-shirts on. Fuck. Fucking three, two, four twos. Some of the fights were four two minute rounds. And uh, I think the last one was an exhibition because there was an issue with the weight. And so they were both the winner. A very Some cunts say 16 ounces. One of the guys showed up with 16 ounces. A ball, man. <laughs> like, putting on the table. Like, what are you thinking for? <laughs> there was a there was a few <laughs> there, was, there was some fucking boys in a neck like eh? obviously somebody's brought a bag of cat with them I seen a few cunts moonwalking about like oh. again in fear of their life like what the fuck is going on where was, was it in a church hall or some shit no the Normandy hotel I never been there before there was a very famous TikToker refused entry as well he's he's a big name you know you, you're his mate. Am I? Fuck. You're his mate. Don't give it. I know. Got to go to Manchester for a bit of business. <laughs> you get, got to hang about the Normandy Hotel and get told to fuck off. <laughs> That's what he did. It's just, the whole thing is weird as fuck and it's getting weirder. And like, they had a rapper in this fucking ring singing and 
Here's, here's the thing. What is it with all these social media guys wanting to be fighters? What's the, what's the, don't know. What is the pull with the being a fighter? They try to move it away for that at the last minute and make it like, no, no, it's all for chat. The, the fighting's not a thing. It's for chat. There was two boys there you could clearly see had had a fucking fight before and their fight was the best one, right? By miles. It was quite a clear distance. Two guys had, and both of them had a, a pro boxer as a coach and theirs was the only one I would have went. That was, that was all right. Was right. there any trans fights? And sadly, no, but there was a couple kicking a bit. But they liked them on social media, remember? Mm. Free Palestine no, in it's that. It's a bit of a circus. When you're <laughs> somebody fighting a big show or something. Like that. <laughs> the last one was like that. It was like a wee boy fighting a big older guy. <laughs> you know, when you used to see the ones outside the boozer, you get like some old boys. Like, Aye. Did, some they old did they batter them? <laughs> Chris, Chris, what's your thoughts on, in the same kind of element? What's your thoughts on like the wimp to warrior stuff? For MMA or boxing? I think it's nonsense, man. It's going to get some cunt killed. Absolutely. <laughs> like, nonsense. actually killed, eh? Um, it's just a money spinner, I know. Aye. Starting to be become like a fucking franchise. That was forty five quid a ticket. It was full. Like <clears throat> was it, it was full. Wow. Honestly, what do you charge for? Excuse me. What do you charge for Hollytown Havoc? <sighs> forty five quid. So these are for for, for professional Aye. amateur MMA fans. Like, and nobody could have went to those boxing matches thinking they were going to be good. Mm -hmm. There was no nobody. Ex like, I'm not saying anything out of order. I don't think nobody expected anything to be any good. But you're paying forty five pound. Aye. To was watch. It, was that what that was as well? Forty five. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was if you'd have went at the end of that, if you'd have paid forty five quid for it, I'd have been like fucking hell. Tell me when you add in the element of it's for charity, then it's kind of like these women to water. What do they train for? Like eight and eight, eight two hour camp. sessions or something. They they, they get shown like a takedown, they mm -hmm. get shown a submission, then they fight each other in the cage at the end of the night with their pals, and then they put the picture up on their socials, and that's him an MMA fighter. So mm -hmm. for them, did it? There's no shin pads and fucking. For them, did it? There's no wimp to warrior is. It's a there's there's a few different ver like versions of it out there. Basically, what you do is you get like a couple of fighters, or like a couple of guys who are want to be fighters. You bring them in, show them a little, a little bit of training, and then you as a coach pairs them off with who they're going to fight on that night. But I know like I, I PT the guy, and he was good, and he had kickboxing experience, and he I was so although you're only getting what is it two eight two hour sessions or whatever it is, learning mm -hmm. submissions or not, that guy was paying me weekly to show him. So when he went in, just fucking mauled mar the guy. I, he absolutely fucked him up, and that's that. That is the issue. You're going to get it's guys. Expensive though, isn't it? I think it to one. actually pay to go yeah. onto the actual one to one, right? Mm -hmm. Do you pay to do it? Yep, it's, yeah, like, it's, it's like a beginner. It? It's like a beginner program. Fucking, I didn't know that. Aye, I thought you just like I'm happy to raise money for charity and I'll jump in and do it. Fucking hell! And then obviously that's even makes say, it even worse. As you say what happens the night of the fight? You sell tickets to all your pals. You know you're going to win because mm -hmm. you know, like, well, for that guy, I was PTN. Like, we were in there every single weekend and we were drilling specific moves. <laughs> we weren't just. He was like, good. <laughs> I, we weren't able, we, I wasn't teaching a class where it's like, you're maybe only getting two, three minutes of my time. Mm -hmm. He was getting an hour of my time, like, no, 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 put your hand here, do this, drill, mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. And he was getting good at these positions. And then just goes in and fucking hoses a guy. And then I got a message saying, your boy won. Like, hi. Surely no. Hey, <laughs> hey, my boy. <laughs> and then it turns out, turns out he was like a fucking super... The guy with the red hair tattoos? Aye, what, what was he in a band? Aye, what was it he turned out to be? Like a fucking super beast or something like that? <laughs> super pedo. The diddler. <laughs> He's he part of the diddler's gang. Whatever, he turned out to be like a fucking... He turned out to be a wrong... South Lanarkshire Strangler. <laughs> turned out to be a wrong... <laughs> That's I just remember what his bud looked like. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was always that PT though. <laughs> For the chick to come in. Uh, what well, you might do is you might watch. You might watch oh. me do the triangle. Uh, so, I'll demo it on you. Near man. By the way, they were every week. Oh, every week. Ball, we are like, bad guys. I was yeah, like, T-Bag <laughs> Central, man. Anyway. Did you see Mighty Mouse? Yes, beating a 200, 250 pound brown belt. He was a brown belt. Mm. That was impressive. Did you see him just swinging him about? Like he was an empty tracks it? With a gi. Bone arrow choke, eh? Bone arrow, mm. arrow choke, it was a belter. It was nice. Aye, it is kind that of guy's, That guy's a black belt. And that just shows you that... The moose. Aye, that... <laughs> the moose. <laughs> it just shows you that jiu-jitsu, where it's original... The original development of it was for small guys to over 
power big guys. Mm, and it's good. just showing the guy who was superiorly skilled won. Mighty Mouse defeating hate crime there. Like to see that. Oh no, is it? I think it's black and white. Same guy. Aye. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but it was a belt today, a bone arrow choke. It was probably it was a very good. That's the point of jiu-jitsu. Aye. That's what, what, I... what event was it? Was it was like Pan Am or something like that? Pan... I don't think it was like one of the biggies. Go up Aye, again. Pan Am. Pan jiu-jitsu. Mm. So I don't think it... Like, I'm not taking anything away from his, vi- no, his no, victory. No, that is a biggie, mate. I think mm-hmm. that is a biggie. For, is it? That's been one for years, man. BJ Penn, that used to win that. Right, could be wrong. Talking shit, but I'm talking shit. I'm saying, mm. but because e, uh, ECDC, no, ECDC <laughs> is like taking over big time. Mm-hmm. 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 And then you've obviously got things like Polaris and all that kind of things. Yeah. But to be fair, I'm still doing gi jujitsu in between. Like he's still, is he not still the champ at one? Is he no fight? Did it not come up yesterday so that he's I fighting? Think a, was, I think a, it was that April a, Fool. A fight was it? All right. I guess I, was, I knew I could see. And I mean, it was like five rounds between the big Thank guy. fuck, we, have, we don't need to wait a year again for this pish. I know. Does MD actually be like, how fucking good's April Fool Day? Like, two, fucking get a grip of yourself, you winks. A two minute scroll on Instagram yesterday, and you're just like, oh, fuck this. I, know. I seen one of my Frank Lampard saying we have a day, and you're just like, this is this what you're doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> you're making Frank Lampard logos <laughs> be Aberdeen fucking badges, man. No job. No fucking job. Not me, you've not got a wife to fuck. You're, you're fucking just sitting making these shit. It's a lot of cunts on me. Exactly. Dane, fuck all. Mm. I don't know. Try to get famous on social media is what they're trying to do. The buggy choke on Cage Warriors, oh, I know. Fuck aye. I know. It's good. Did you not go for it a few times? I've never been caught in one. Have you used to? Yes. I don't know if he's got me with one. I think he probably has. We're talking about Sean Sean Clancy. I I thought he would have been the first one cage wars to get it. Oh, he's probably fucking spitting teeth. He has done it in a fight, I'm sure. I'm sure he's buggy choked somebody in a fight. No, in a fight, in a grappling uh, grappling match. Oh, right. So you remember he done the they done the four mans and stuff, I remember mm. that. Aye. Done grappling comps in cages. Because I, I was like, I'm sure I've seen him doing it in a cage. But, but then getting it on Cage Warriors is obviously a big thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was a fight, but I'm sure he'd done it in a grappling match in a cage. Mm-hmm. But he's definitely caught somebody with, in a match. I'm I mean, the first time seeing him doing it in the gym, I was standing at the side and I was like, I think he, that looks like a, oh yeah, I can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, he's it's, got, the kid's got power. It's not just that, he's just got the fucking balls to try it, eh? Just like, ah, fuck it, I'll get a go. Who cares? That's how you're supposed to be. Guys, if you have been involved in an accident, there's only one number you need to know, and it's to get in touch with G4 Claims. Ross, what is that number? 01698 767 172. And if you don't have a phone, Ross, where can you hit them up? Not at faultclaim.com. If you don't like talking to people on the phone, where can you hit them up? You can also WhatsApp them. Why would I go and go to G4 Claims to deal with all my hassle of a car accident well I'll tell you why because they give you a courtesy car your whole claim they'll give you 100% of the claim which is entitled to you and they'll deal with all that stress I've told you Ross one more time for that number 01698 767 172 it makes sense if you've been involved in an accident to hit up G4 claims fair play um. but I think he went for a few times had fucked it up and he obviously got the the sub in the dying seconds, mm. not the dying seconds. Why is he not punching fuck at his face here? I know it's old, but you could land at least twenty shots here. He could definitely make me an you're, effort you're to frame. Him. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> okay, his, his head's blue, mate. Honestly, I would stand up and I would slam. Cheese grate his face onto the cage, mate. Just up and down, up and down. He's just going to have to talk us through that. What's he doing now? Squeezing his uh, <laughs> arteries. So he's, so he's using he, his leg, even though he's on bottom though. He's, he's using his leg and his lap. To shut off the blood uh, going to his brain. So one shoulder's covering one side. Be the bottom. Aye. It's, it's a, a fucking it's a punk ass bitch move. <laughs> As you said, Chris, fucking, you'll know be doing that when you're getting elbowed, when somebody's dropping elbows into your jaw. And the thing is, as well, he knows his hand is right on his face, so his face is right there. Like. Obviously, the guy's needs to be in tap uh, side control mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. good cross face putting a bit of pressure on to actually get that <coughs> to the bottom anyway but, do you want to but how like you on the bottom not me. but you know what I like about Jiu Jitsu the fact that that when we first started Jiu Jitsu being side control we had good shoulder of justice mm. 
head. Oh, it's a on winning, the way. It was a winning position. Uh, and mm-hmm. then somebody's like, check this out. Uh, I did this move, and people were like, get the fuck. And then all of a sudden, you get nailed with a buggy choke. Now we get told shows. not to do it in the gym. Aye, and it's like, no, no, we can't put no. it there anymore. But no, the, no side control. It, in our time in the sport, it's developed so much. Mm-hmm. Going for what a triangle was to what a triangle is now, all these inversions, okay. the the rise of fucking leg lock guys, like just grabbing legs and trying to smash ankles, knees, ligaments, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. The way the sport's going. You got me with one last week, actually. Straight away, I was like, oh, you fucker. See, when I tried to like stand up and kick out, I was like, uh. it's, uh, aye. Yeah, they come on, and especially in the gym, they do come on pretty quick, don't they? And the last thing you want to do is, if you're going with somebody that's inexperienced mm-hmm. and they, they, they turn one way and as you're applying pressure that way as well. Or it's slippy or anything. Because it can get, can get slippy in there. Like, and that's you out for, what, six months mm-hmm. recovery? I never try to, the thing I always do though is, I didn't even want to panic when in it because you didn't want to be one of these guys who just. I see a lot of guys even at high level like shows. I think their leg gets wrapped up and they just panic and tap because mm-hmm. they go, "Oh, you fucker!" Right. That's. I feel like I've no got control of my leg. I'm in trouble. In this position. I'm tapping. I right. try and let it go to a point where I'm like, right now I do have to tap before this gets mm-hmm. silly. I'm not letting it get like obviously I'm. I'm not wanting it getting fucking twisted off, but at the same time I'm not wanting to just go. Oh, my fucking leg's been straightened out. I'm tapping. Mm-hmm. So. It's a weird one. The buggy choke's cool though, you see. Yeah. Guys, just to let you know we're heading over to the Patreon now. So if you want to continue listening, you need to head over onto the Patreon. That's the joys of being part of the Patreon, guys. Keep it high, keep it low. I didn't know that was happening at all. <laughs> That's this week's podcast. Um, if you are looking to find out what we were speaking about in the Patreon episode, there's only one way to find out. It's hit up the Patreon. Patreon has got some really good content on it. There's a there's a bank of videos there, and there's some stuff already in the pipeline that we've been filming the last couple of weeks. Hit up Patreon, hit the like and share in the all social medias and our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next week. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. Subscribe. <laughs>